Oh my gosh. Alright, what's up everybody? So welcome to Oxford Circus Man, a place where all kinds of weird stuff actually happens. When I say weird stuff, I mean check this guy out, it's all kinds of uh You guys see those skills man? Oh, that is, uh, yeah, that's interesting, man. This guy must be the strongest guy in the whole world, man. He's got two guys in his, he's holding two guys up with his hands. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about last week or the week before when I went to Goodwood. Like I go every year, but this year was extremely special. Those zombies came down, man. I mean, when was the last time you saw like almost 30 zombies in one place? But there were other pretty cool stuff as well, like. pretty insane cars like the Ferrari P80 Ford slash uh, yeah, C. Is that how you say it? It's a P80 C. So this car, man, looks absolutely outrageous. The car of the show is this. P72 Di Tommaso. But let me paint a little bit of a backstory. Earlier this year, I was in a place called Geneva where every year around March, brand new cars get born. While I was there, there was Apollo IE, but then next to the IE was this weird looking old school car that I had no clue what the hell it was. But this guy, Charlie, he did. that corn? Yes. Boys and girls, look man, this is corn man. Back in Zamunda, we used to have this for breakfast. You roast this and you eat it. This thing's delicious man. This is how it looks before you peel the husk and stuff. So yeah, thank you very much man. Thank you. Can I put it back? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, so Charlie was like, man, innocent man, how the hell do you not know about the Pantera, uh, yeah, the Tommaso? I'm like, you know what man? You know, I'll be honest man, I don't know a lot about some of these old classic cars, man, obscure classic cars. Charlie said to me, this car is an absolute classic. Like back in the 60s, it was basically an icon. So I was like, okay, why is this car driving along through the streets of Geneva? And then I spoke to uh, Ryan, uh, one of the guys who brought us up Polo IE. I wanted some explanations as to what the hell this car was and why it was, uh, you know, in Geneva. And this is what he said, people. Because De Tommaso is one of the most un misunderstood brands yeah. in automotive. Yeah. So uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a new product to tell a chapter in the company's history that is unknown and two, to pay homage to another one of our favorite eras. Fast forward to July 2019 and they unveiled 
Para todos sus envidiosos. P72, which I think is one of the most craziest looking cars that I've ever seen. I mean, okay, not ever seen, but you know what I mean. I mean, this car has more gold than, um, I don't know, man, like a magpie or something. From the wheels, the wing mirrors, to the interior, to the engine bay, even the trunk is also lined with gold, man. today compared to yesterday's runs and the other runs in the Apollo but yeah it's like a moving art gallery with a lot of power. Apparently you drove in your socks, uh, explain yourself. Yeah well like... the interior is too beautiful <laughs> and it's wet and muddy so I had to do something so yeah I thought I'd keep the interior clean. One of the most striking things for me is uh, how very analog uh, this car is. <laughs> Interior, which I think, eh, in some ways, is probably inspired by, I don't know, if, ooh, all kinds of guys on bikes out here, man. I think the Pagani, Zonda, and the Huayra had a massive influence on the interior design of this car. Most of the new cars right now are going all completely digital, man. You've got all kinds of big ass screens, but this car went the complete opposite direction, man. They have all kinds of old school, uh, how can I say, manual dials? Is it manual dials? Oh, analog. That's what I was looking for. I want to find out how much power or engine this car was actually basically using. So I asked Ryan. It has the Apollo all carbon fiber chassis coupled with a manual transmission, but we are not revealing final technical specifications. Ah, that's, that's what I was gonna ask you next. <laughs> until sorry, sorry. Uh, the coming yeah. months. All right, let's be honest, man. That's not quite what we wanted to hear. We wanted to hear, you know, this thing's got a crazy V12 in there where I don't know, two million horsepower or something like that. But uh, he was playing the cars close to his chest. I'm kind of hoping that it's gonna have a V12 engine in there. At the very least, a V10. But my guess is it might even be a V8 because I mean, uh, I guess the original was probably a V8 engine. So if it's a V8, it's a little bit eh. But a V12 would be like, God damn, that would be amazing. Let's find out a little bit how much this car is gonna cost. I mean, actually, I didn't actually ask him this question because uh, he kind of preempted it and he knew I was gonna ask that question. He asked me how much I think this car is gonna be selling for. What, what would you think the, the price would be? This, I'll uh, probably think a cool. Do me a favor, before I reveal the starting price of this car, let me know in the comments below how much you think this car is gonna be retailing for when it eventually does come out. And then I'm gonna tell you how much Ryan said it's gonna be starting at. I guarantee you, you're gonna get it wrong, man. Uh, I think a lot of people completely got it wrong. And I was like, damn, okay, maybe 1.5 to 2 million squid. 1.5 to 2 million pounds. Okay. I also asked a whole bunch of other people how much they thought this car was gonna be retailing for. And they were coding everything from like 2 million to, to 6 million. I mean, that's like, god damn, that's crazy. Ryan told me basically this car is gonna be starting from. Now the final price is not firm. Yeah. But we are uh, forecasting to have the base price be 750, 750, 750. 750k. Yep, 750k. That's kind of like insane. I don't know of another car in the same price range and category that starts from 750k. The only other car that I know starts from 750k is the McLaren Senna. But that car is not really in the same category. It's more of a track kind of like monster kind of car. So the Di Tommaso P72 is more of like a, I guess a Grand Tour kind of thing. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. I don't see any other car in this industry right now that directly competes uh, in price in the same category with the P72 Di Tommaso. So I asked Ryan how many they're gonna be making and he said uh, they're only gonna be making 72. That is super duper limited, man. That basically means that the second hand market is gonna go crazy because uh, I can imagine a lot of people are gonna want this car. Uh, but they're only making 72 and that's gonna push the value up like crazy in the second hand market so if you can get it when it first comes out man you got money for life man so yeah p72 starting from 750k and making 72 of them and i think that's pretty insane i don't know what you guys think about the gold wheels and stuff you know I, you know I, i'll probably spec it differently but i gotta admit the gold wheels the rose gold and the candy apple red kind of works as well and I love the seats and obviously the attention to detail and stuff. Even the seat harnesses have like the P72 on there as well. That's kind of cool. So apart from that, what else is there to say about the P72? Um, 